This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. And don't forget to check us out this weekend at Grand Rapids Comic Con. Hope to see you there. Triple check this again. You two made a children's movie. Oh, yes. I'm surprised it took us this long, honestly. Did you two have any desire to make a children's movie? Of course not. No, but we love taking money from kids. What, did you get tired of robbing them outside of candy stores? Don't be absurd. We could never get tired of that. This just seemed like a better way to do it on a grand scale. All right, well, show us the trailer so we can get this over with. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. There's no ladies here, but keep going. Prepare yourself for the biggest hit of the summer. For years, Hollywood has tried to create the ultimate blockbuster, but they sucked balls at it. Really thinking of the kids, huh? As long as they're thinking about us, we don't care. Now, witness the next evolution in cinematic entertainment. Commercial, the movie. Wow. They just said it. For centuries, storytellers have challenged you with strong characters and ideas. Well, that was stupid. We're just giving you things you like, doing things you like. Oh no, SpongeBob has been encaged by Dr. Doofenshmirtz's Cajunator. I gotta use my Batman gun to fire Batman. I'm Batman, I'm Batman, I'm Batman, I'm Batman. It's a little funny. Oh look, Queen Elsa drank magic Starbucks and is gigantic. Optimus Prime better breakdance to snap her out of it. Oh no! It's raining Mario's eating Happy Meals! <laughs> Seriously? Like, what? It's creatively soulless! Say Aunt Despair, who's now an Arthur toy. Yes, Uncle Lies, who's now a Nike shoe. Can I say there's a streaming platform where you can watch all of these characters right now? Legally, I don't think we can. Okay, I won't mention it. But if we could, what would be on it? Probably all the X-Men surfing with dinosaurs from the Jurassic Park. <laughs> Critic, I thought you spoke out against stuff like this. I, I do. I thought you were sick of manipulative bullshit for kids. I am. Then why are you having fun with this? Well, I, what else would I expect from them? Media and advertising go hand in hand like awkwardness in current Super Bowl commercials. Some are able to work with it and turn in some amazing films like the Lego Movie or Wreck-It Ralph. And some of these really fell flat like The Wizard or Mac and Me. But then you have those weird ones in between, the ones that are so obviously an ad, but they do it in such a creatively pandering way, not even hiding the fact that it's an ad, that you can't help but have fun with them. Wizard and Mac and me are funny now, but back then they didn't even entertain their target audience when they came out. Movies and shows like Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers were all designed clearly just to sell toys, but gave their demographic exactly what they wanted. The same can be said about the original Space Jam. I made it no secret I couldn't get into this film, but I think I was too old to have it resonate with me. I just wasn't the right demographic. Since then, the film has been regarded as not good, but a perfect time capsule of 1996 trying to sell you 1996. So why should it be a shock that the second one is the most 2021 time capsule trying to sell you 2021? <laughs> Space Jam A New Legacy got ripped apart by critics, but the general public seemed to enjoy it fine. And surprisingly, I can see why. The same way I praise Ninja Turtles or He-Man for being obvious but awkwardly charming commercials of the time, the same goes for the follow-up to one of the most famous cinematic advertisements in history. The difference is, they double down on it, making the jokes either get legitimate laughs for how little they're hiding their advertising, or unintentional laughs for how hilariously cringy they are. The difference between these cringy laughs and Mac and Me's cringy laughs? I don't think this movie cares why you're laughing, just as long as you're laughing. It's like watching a desperate clown outside a car wash suddenly be given a multi-million dollar budget to do the exact same thing. 
You know it's an ad, but he's still going all out and trying anything to entertain you. Even when it doesn't work, you still strangely admire him. In fact, sometimes you admire him more when it doesn't work because he's giving it his all with these limitations having no idea if it'll succeed. So yeah, I'm weirdly defending this awkward sellout for being the most entertaining awkward sellout it could be. And given its starting point, I don't think the makers of this have a problem with that. So, as long as we can acknowledge an entertaining ad is still clearly an ad. And now Chase from Paw Patrol versus One Punch Man. <laughs> Congratulations, you win the country of Coca-Cola. Hmm, I could use a Pepsi. Let's take a look at Space Jam A New Legacy. All right, my shift's not over till nine, so tell Coach C I'm gonna be a few minutes late picking you up. Sorry, I accidentally put in he got game. No, this is weirdly how the film opens, looking more like a gritty independent film, which honestly matches the wheel of random tones that spun throughout the entire flick. This is young LeBron James back in 1998, who can't keep his mind in the game and is instead drawn to the Looney Tunes on his... Game Boy? In 98? I think it was almost 10 years old by that point. What other handheld system was out by the... Okay, it's not that far-fetched. You could be a once-in-a-generation talent. Focus on the game of basketball and not these distractions. Just stay focused, never leave your team, and everybody will love you fine. So LeBron throws out his Game Boy and almost instantly becomes a global superstar. Uh, Nintendo would like to talk with how you used him in your commercial movie commercial movie. LeBron James. While his star rises, his son Dom, played by Cedric Joe, is talking with his brother about how he's more into making video games than playing basketball. Like how you're almost ready to tell Dad about the E3 game camp next weekend? I just think you should rip the band-aid off and ask him. You just saying that because he says yes to everything you ask. <laughs> okay, good practice. Want to act for real this time? If you think I'm too hard on these kids, don't worry. They'll look like a pair of Olivier's when LeBron starts talking. What's your fundamentals? Darius, chill out. You know I got full court vision. Are we quitting on each other now? Can't be great without putting in work. Uh, you want to put in the work? How about one acting class, LeBron? <laughs> This is strange because he actually did make an appearance in another movie called Trainwreck and he was actually pretty funny. Good timing, pacing, delivery, he wasn't bad. So you owe $32.43, just pay your part. It's better for our friendship. Fuck you. Fuck I, you. I think I left my Fuck wallet. Fuck you. It's, it's Fuck right in the you. car. I don't know, maybe that director knew how to make certain people humorous because man, this one knows how to make every person sound like a school play put on by the Department of Motor Vehicles. What was that? Everything in between these four lines is work. Come on, Dom. You gotta concentrate. Stop it! Your angry whisper is raised to a dull roar! Not to say this awkward acting can't be hilarious in its own right. Dinner time. What are we having for dinner? Spaghetti and meatball? Ow! Oh, that's Man. my favorite. I wasn't even advertising anything, but it was said so awkward it felt like it was. Oh, that's Man. my favorite. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee! If you haven't figured it out yet, LeBron is the overbearing dad who means well, but doesn't understand his son. This cliche has been done to death, but I will give credit, it is off-brand for a superstar like this. It is, in a strange way, kind of a risk for a guy who still wants to sell a lot of merchandise. If I don't stay on him, all the distractions... He doesn't need a coach. He needs his dad. I remember they deleted a scene in the first one where Michael Jordan horsewhipped his kids. But they figured an R. Kelly song would make the film uncomfortable enough. Meanwhile, in the lame tricks, Don Cheadle plays an AI named Algae Rhythm. Yeah, remember, this is the same series that came up with the mean team, who's looking for a popular symbol to promote the Warner Brothers serververse. He's a family man, an entrepreneur, a social media superstar with millions of fans. He's adored by all people, most people, enough people. So, Cheadle is to this movie what Dennis Hopper was to the Super Mario Brothers movie. While the other actors look uncomfortably lost, he looks too comfortable acting however the flying fuck he wants. Yes! Thank you! Finally, huh? Put some speck on my name, right? Oh, man. oh man. Every line he's like, I don't care if this works or not. I'm still convinced I'm Captain Planet from 10 years ago. Priceless! Hello! So, no, 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 no. Get ready. This make you feel all insignificant, don't it? They're alive! Alive! I'm sorry, I've voiced Donald Duck now. I must sabotage you for Disney. LeBron checks in on Dom's new game he's been developing and his fucking Star Trek technology that scans any 3D image into his computer via phone. Oh, he also has a tambourine. I don't fucking know. Ooh! Posterized. Posterized? Is this not real basketball? Is this one of those games of video the village elders say do not speak of? 
When LeBron tries doing his signature move, though, a glitch occurs, deleting the character from the game. Yeah, sounds right. I remember when they fixed an eyelash on Sora and it completely erased him from Smash Brothers. I game, fellow kids! My entire character is gone. He tries making it up to Dom by bringing him to Warner Brothers to talk about a new marketing idea. Please don't dab. Did you just say, please dad dab? No, I said please. Dab. When you make Kareem Abdul-Jabbar look like Daniel fucking Day-Lewis. He's invited to see HBO Max, I mean the serververse, and is asked to be their spokesperson. He does a great impression of his reaction when this movie was pitched to him. This idea is just straight up bad. I'm a ball player. You know, an athlete's acting, that never goes well. This is like a meta version of Jeff Goldblum saying it's a bad idea to open a dinosaur park after they open the dinosaur park. That's exactly what I was thinking. You're saying what I'm thinking. You're canceled, algorithm. What a terrible idea. With all due respect, Silverman, you shouldn't be talking about your expertise on internet culture. Somehow, this spirals into a conversation about his son going to game design camp when LeBron wants him to go to basketball camp. I'm not going to basketball camp, Dad. Tom, you don't have to be scared. You got amazing potential on the court. Yeah, amazing potential for water aerobics. Dom. Dom. Stop, don't come back. LeBron follows him to the elevator while Al G plans to lure them to the serververse. You know I can't let you back out of camp like that. You made a commitment. You make me hate basketball. Well, if it makes you feel better, kid, you're not alone. You never let me just do me. This is about that time I caught you jerking it to flow from those progressive commercials. Dom! Algy pulls him into the serververse, and is it just me or is LeBron getting better in this? We're in the computer. <laughs> you know I'm claustrophobic. Dad, Dad. Hey, Siri, you let us out of here, please? Siri. Who goes there? All right, you can tell me. You got this footage when he was shooting a late night sketch, right? He is literally smiling at the camera. Algy, naturally, challenges LeBron to a basketball game where the winner gets his son. After showing he can't even give a scream convincingly. It's one word. It's not even a word, it's a vowel. You can't even get a vowel right! He's dropped with a quote-unquote reject to search for a team. This is, of course, Toon World, where Bugs Bunny lives. I'm shorter than Kevin Hart! I know who that is, and he is short! Good commentary, movie! What the? I'm a cartoon? Mmm, cartoons are animated. You're more like a cardboard cutout. What's up, Doc? Ah! Bugs Bunny? No, I forsook cartoons for basketball. Thou shall not suck a dash. Aren't you LeBron James? Big Chungus reference, even though they have no idea why they're referencing it in three, two, one. I'm Hutton Wabby. Ah! We don't know why the internet's applauding that, but we'll take it. Well, yes, it does take a while for the Looney Tunes to show up compared to the first one. The setup is pretty funny. Algy convinced the Looney Tunes that the other worlds in the serververse are better, and they completely abandon Bugs. Which is something I 100% believe they would do. Bugs spends his days getting drunk on carrot juice, pretending they're still around, talking to dummy versions of them. I'd be lying if I said plastered Bugs was something I ever thought I'd see, but I'm glad I witnessed it. And I wish them all the best in their new endeavors. Family's everything. Yep, family. Did I ever tell you the time I pants Mickey Mouse on Who Framed Roger Rabbit? One testicle. Nobody knows that! LeBron says he needs to form a team, and Bug says he can help. So he tricks Marvin the Martian by stealing his ship. These entrances are cute, but the last door on a rocket ship rocket shipping away? That's goddamn hilarious. Well, we'll just get back in our ship and out of your way. Sorry, I don't read sign language. That's more the coyotes thing. After in joke one millionth and twelve for animation nerds, they stretch out across the serververse to find their team. These scenes are hit and miss, but the hits are pretty clever. Seeing Daffy as Super Duck causing the crimes he's trying to save people from? That's great. Sam and Casablanca being Yosemite Sam? Also pretty good. Even data references like Austin Powers strangely work not because of Elmer as Mini-Me, but the topper with Shave Sylvester as Mr. Bigglesworth. Also, I'm not gonna say that Warner Brothers stole my idea that Fury Road was a long Roadrunner cartoon, but I will say lawyer up because my attorney is fucking ruthless. My legal team is Twitter, and they know how to hashtag! But like I said, there are some misses. Like family-friendly Rick and Morty. We're done running tests on your badger thing. It turns out his condition is irreversible. I'll never erase what I saw from my brain! He's your problem now, Dum Dum! A part of me is amused that they're in a kid's film at all, but man, they needed some R-rated writing. It's funny because later in the film, they do a joke where Algy swears at his players and they bleep it out. 
That doesn't matter at all. What matters is that I win this game. I think instead using that joke here might have worked. I'll never erase from my brain. He's your problem now, Dum Dum. This Matrix parody might have been cute if every movie didn't do it 20 years earlier. You really got nothing on me, bro. <laughs> There's a scene where Foghorn Leghorn is Daenerys. Winter, I say winter is coming! What the fuck? I don't even have the words. And of course, we have the return of Lola Bunny. Okay, so I made a big stink in the last one about how Lola had no personality outside of bunny boobies. And yes, it is still admittedly weird that this cast that's been naked for years and years suddenly has one that's anatomically correct. But the fact is, there's plenty of characters who are designed sexy but can still be funny. The big problem with Lola was, she wasn't funny. She wasn't even loony. Her only shtick was she didn't like to be objectified while she constantly objectified herself. But again, if you know kids' movies around 96, the personality of the token girl was to be the token girl. Well, since that's what the most 1996 movie gave us, what does the most 2021 movie give us? A Cards Against Humanity answer. Yep, she's just strong, and that's it. I spent years training for this. Do not mess it up for me. I guess that's a percent better, but come on, they're having fun with Lola's character in other versions. She's voiced by Zendaya, and she's been funny and stuff. Give her a damn personality. Again, though, it does match the criteria of being the most 2021 product. I mean, I can't act like I don't see the same bland character recently. So I guess I can't be that mad. This moment of her training to be an Amazon is creatively done, and even though I feel like it's borrowing a lot from Spider-Verse, it does so in an impressive way. It's a pretty cool sequence. You are now an Amazon. Now, go with your friends. Deliver your Amazon packages. Here's a bottle for you to piss in. When you're promoted, you get a funnel. By the way, does Warner Brothers own Hook? Because this is Hook. I think it's really a shame that your dad doesn't support you. He won't let me be me. I'd let you be you. Dom, did he ever go to your baseball game? I don't play baseball. Nobody cares, Dom! We're the most boring part of the movie! No, really, the movie does grind to a halt whenever these two are together. The only saving grace is other basketball players proving they can out-awful LeBron. I'm next, because if Clay's in it, then I'm in it. Hey, if I'm gonna be in this game, I need a superpower or something. I need one of those special modes. Hello? Hi, Michael Jordan, it's the Nostalgia Critic. How did you get this number? Remember why I made fun of your acting in Space Jam? I have no idea who this is. Well, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I had no idea how worse it could have been. Do you know how powerful I am? I'll talk to you later, buddy, okay? I can mail you to yourself. He took it well. to be behind podium screaming about what? Stamps.com! If you're looking for ways to skip the trip to the post office and dodge all that hectic holiday shopping traffic, why not save time and money with Stamps.com? Stamps.com lets you compare rates, print labels, and access exclusive discounts on UPS and USPS services all year long. It just makes sense, especially if your business sends more mail and packages during the holidays. But how's my experience with Stamps.com been? You see all asking that. It's great! Whether you're selling online or running an office or side hustle, Stamps.com can save you so much time, money, and stress during the holidays. Access the post office and UPS shipping services you need without taking the trip. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. Oh, yeah, I said it! I said it! Go all the way! I said it! Hi! Going to the post office instead of using Stamps.com is kind of like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Just going up a couple of floors? Sure, take the stairs walking up 30 flights a day you could use a break if you spend more than a few minutes a week dealing with mail and shipping stamps.com is a lifesaver you'll save so much time and money you'll wonder why you didn't start sooner and get your quotes ready for this we got a special offer yeah you better be writing this down do people still do that right on notepads and stuff i don't know some of you still wear fedora hats to i 
I make you all up, none of you are here. Save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com. Sign up at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four week free trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for your special offer today. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of you want to chime in. Chime, chime, I got a transition! When your online checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is $33 overdraft fee. Overdraft fees have gotten out of hand. In 2019, traditional banks took $11 billion in overdraft fees. Chime does something different. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with Spot Me Fee Free Overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. What? That's right, what? right, what? that's right, what, 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 what? Now you deserve to have financial peace of mind. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started today at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. Now get ready for that fast stuff they all have to say at the end. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by Bank or Bank or Stripe Bank. NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased by $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft. Overdraft fee savings based on eligible members use of spot me v $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate checking account survey. NCRL June 2020 overdraft fees report. I'm a guy shouting at a podium. I have nowhere I need to be, but I'm going to walk off like I do. Check them out today. the gang how to play basketball like a basketball movie with them didn't happen and they make references that even characters invented in the 30s would find dated that's some fancy footwork doc let me try even if that joke was in the first one people would be like whose white grandpa wrote that algae okay. arrives for the game and on top of making lebron 3d again he makes the tunes 3d as well i guess a lot of people were thrown off by these designs but honestly i wasn't bothered by them I do prefer them hand-drawn, but I get they wanted to upgrade things, and again, 2021 time capsule, everything is CG. It's also a little neat to see the other Warner Brothers cartoons given the same treatment, as a ton of their characters fill the seats. And they said the Warner Brothers store would never come back. Algae brings people from the real world in the stands as well, including LeBron's family. Yeah, kind of funny in a movie about ignoring a kid, two other kids get completely ignored. And we're introduced to the other team, the Goon Squad. Queen of the Web. Fire! A part of me thought maybe it'd be cooler if other Warner Brothers villains made up the bad team, like the Joker, Mojo Jojo, Darkseid. But again, I think they wanted to stay on brand with an original bad guy team, and combining real players with monster elements is kind of creative. I like the way these things look. While we're on the subject, the background characters totally steal the show. Mr. Freeze in particular, I'm totally convinced would act the exact same if Arnold was there. Also, is Batman doing the blowjob thing? Monster dunk and she dunks again and again and again. Apparently the Toon Squad is unaware that the opposing team is deadly allergic to French skunks. There certainly are a lot of serial killers and rapists in this family film tonight. This is not going well. Yeah, that's what most of the critics thought. The gang gets ripped apart, but Sylvester says he found a secret weapon. But I found Michael Jordan! You found him? Oh, I can feel his power already! Now granted, this joke takes way too long to get to the punchline that you probably figured out what it's gonna be, but it is still pretty damn clever. Jordan! That's Michael B. Jordan. How could you think he was his anus? I thought he aged gracefully. Not all Jordans look alike, you walking racist! I love Daffy writing trade Sylvester when honestly, this would've gotten just as big a laugh. Bugs, time to do what you guys do best. As you'd expect, LeBron learns not to be such a sourpuss and that the only way to win is to let the Looney Tunes be loony. And what's LeBron's definition of being loony? Literally just smiling. <laughs> Still technically more loony than anything Lola's done. 
Again, while not every joke works, some of these make me laugh hard. I'm now realizing Gossamer was put in this movie just for this one joke, but damn it, it's a good joke. Take it to the other end. These silly tunes don't have what it takes to win. We rapping now? We rapping? Oh yeah, this scene. This moment is like Mufasa's death in Lion King. You hate to see it coming, but you know you have to go through it. What up? It's Parky King. They call me P Double Al G. Never forget we did this. May it be written in all the history books next to all our biggest failures that we let this happen. Show them who you really are, notorious P.I.G. There's nothing sacred. The sad thing is, this could actually be a decent idea. A rap with a character who stutters could be pretty humorous. In fact, at first, it looks like they might go that route. But quickly you realize whoever wrote this was not a fan of Straight Outta Compton because he thought Cool as Ice was more street. This pig is lit. I'm super legit. Every time I'm out in public, people asking me for pics. Oh my god, we're actually losing points! We're losing points! How is that possible? Well, the internet will kill me if I don't make this reference. Let's green egg and ham it. I'm actually surprised how many levels that works on. How bad is this scene? No joke, it kinda kills the movie. I'm not even kidding, when I was watching this again, I only remembered one thing that happened after this. We'll get to that in a bit, but there's about 20 minutes left not including the credits, and almost none of it is funny or entertaining. They do another Matrix joke with Granny. She is the one. When was this written? LeBron acts out a dramatic moment with his son, which is about as emotional as you would think. Dom, your game is amazing, son, but I guess I would have known that if I'd have listened more. I want you to be yourself. Do you understand how much I love you? Seriously, was Tina Belcher your acting coach? Things that I went through to get where I am now had to be a certain way. Tammy, spill that. Jimmy Jr., mop that up with your pants. I don't even know if I'm saying this right. I'm a smart, strong, sensual woman. Oh, God. And Al G says he's gonna turn himself into a monster. Well, cool, with designs like these, he ought to look pretty fun. Oh, he's just a shitty CGI version of himself. Not since switching out a giant snake with a giant parrot have I been so intimidated. I guess we do get this scene out of it. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. If he added a snap, that would have been the funniest scene in the movie. There is one thing that brings it back to that sweet, epically ridiculous schmaltz, and that's Bugs Bunny sacrificing his life for the team. Yep, he performs the glitch that deletes a character, and he slowly dies. Oh, and you better believe they play it totally straight. That's the least looting thing you've ever done. You got that right. But taking care of the people you love is fundamental. The needs of the loony outweigh the needs of the doc. How'd I do, coach? Thank you. Yeah, I believed his death in what's opera doc more. And that's when he literally turned to the camera saying it was all an act. We did it. We're all back together again. Hey, where's Peppy? Yes, your first guess as to what his last words are is totally correct. That's all, folks. Yeah, sorry, Porky. Guess those can't be your last words anymore. I kind of stole the thunder from you. But hey, maybe you can pick something from that shitty rap. He turns into goddamn pixie dust and ascends into heaven, leaving his shape in the air. This is both laughably epic and epically laughable at the same time. He should just mumble to himself that he's Superman while he's at it. But, big surprise, it doesn't really stick. LeBron lets Dom go to his game design camp and Bugs is just randomly there. The reason? I told you, I'm a tune, Doc. I can survive anything. This is when the movie posts, we don't give a shit. It's fucking Space Jam. And you know what? I really don't give a shit either. I just have fun. Space Jam A New Legacy is entertaining for many in 2021, the same reason the first one was entertaining for many in 1996. It's a family film zeitgeist that'll be immediately dated, hell, chunks of it are already, but embraces what it is and gives its target audience what it wants. Do I wish this could be legit funny all the way through and work on the same level as something like Lego Movie? Absolutely. 
but as someone who didn't get into the first Space Jam, but honestly really wanted to, this had a little bit more self-awareness that I was looking for, ranging from laughably cringy to enjoyably clever. It's hard to say this is a film everyone will like, and it's very clear why a lot of critics didn't enjoy it. But as someone who grew up finding charm in a generation of cartoons that did the same thing, I found a similar charm here. Whether it's ironically, sincerely, or somewhere in between, this is a film I think a lot of people are going to be entertained by, one way or another. You know, this trailer's growing on me. Hey, how long till the movie comes out? You just saw it. The trailer was the entire movie. Yes, so we can fit in more runtimes. Well, what would the trailer for the trailer be? Oh, well that would be trailer the movie, which would also be commercial the movie, which would also be- You're robbing us, aren't you? Took you long enough to notice. Bye. Should we stop them? The people watching probably have other videos to view, so we should wrap this up. Good idea. Dom, do you understand how much I love you? Well, I just want you to know that I'm sorry. Ah, jeez! <laughs> I better get that. Hey, Doug Walker here doing a charity shout out and this week we are doing EB Research Partnership. Uh, this is the largest nonprofit funding research aimed at treating and ultimately curing it's a very long, complicated name to say. I'm just calling it EB. <laughs> uh, what it does uh, is it is a group of devastating and life-threatening skin disorders that affect children from birth. And this organization works to treat and cure EB as quickly and efficiently as possible, fulfilling their mission through partnerships with nonprofit and for-profit organizations, uh, foundations, individual donors, and the EB and research committee uh, communities. Leading researchers uh, say treatments and a cure for EB are within reach. Uh, though they have made significant progress, they need much greater resources in the pursuit in the pursuit of that cure. Uh, they also have a four-star uh, rating on Charity Navigator, like, you know, uh, these all do. Uh, but this is really a terrible disease, and it's something that can be cured. That's what people are saying. They're saying get, they're getting closer and closer to it. So through either uh, your donations or just spreading awareness, uh, you can just make people more aware of this and what they can do to help. So please either see if you have anything to give, or if not, like I said, just go ahead, spread the link, uh, uh, share it around, check out the site yourself, see the good that they're doing, and see if there's anything you can do to help or spread the word. Thank you so much and take care.